We are continuing our Marvel Marathon Madness with 2011 X-Men First Class, the fifth installment in the X-Men film series, as well as the first movie to introduce a new cast of X-Men to portray their younger counterparts from the first three films. Now, this film is mainly set in 1962 during the Cuban Missile Crisis and focuses on the relationship between Charles Xavier and Eric Lancer and the origin of their respective groups, the X-Men and the Brotherhood of Mutants as they deal with the Hellfire Club, led by Sebastian Shaw, who's a mutant supremacist bent on enacting nuclear war. So, let us go ahead and jump straight into the plot. In 1944, at the Auschwitz concentration camp, Nazi officer Klaus Schmidt witnesses a young Eric Lanscher bending a metal gate with his mutant abilities upon being separated from his parents. Schmidt then brings Eric into his office and tells him to move a metal coin on his desk. When Eric cannot do it, Schmidt kills his mother. Distraught, Eric's magnetic powers manifest, and he destroys the entire room. Now, during this same time, at a mansion in Westchester County, New York, child telepath Charles Xavier meets Raven, whose natural form is this blue skin with scales surrounding it, and a mutant ability to shapeshift. Seeing that she is hungry and alone, Charles invites her to live with him. We move ahead to 1962. As Eric is tracking Schmidt to exact his revenge, Charles earns his doctorate from Oxford University. Now, in Las Vegas, CIA officer Moira McTaggart follows US Army Colonel Hendry into the Hellfire Club where she also sees Schmidt, who now goes by Sebastian Shaw, along with mutant telepath Emma Frost, cyclone-producing Riptide, and teleporter Azazel. Threatened by Shaw and teleported to the Joint War Room, Hendry advocates deploying nuclear missiles in Turkey. Shaw, an energy-absorbing mutant whose powers have kept him young, later kills Hendry when the latter tries to detonate a grenade on Shaw's ship. Moira, seeking Xavier's advice on mutation, takes him and Raven to the CIA, where they convince Director McComb that mutants exist and that Shaw is a grave threat. Another CIA officer sponsors the mutants and invites them to the secret Division X facility. Moira and Xavier locate Shaw as Eric is attacking him, and Charles rescues Eric from drowning as Shaw escapes. Xavier then brings Eric to Division X, where they meet Hank McCoy, a mutant scientist with prehensile feet. Xavier uses McCoy's mutant locating device Cerebro to seek and recruit other mutants. Angel Salvador, codenamed Angel, Alex Summers, who goes by Havoc, Armando Muniz, who adopts the name Darwin, and Sean Cassidy, also known as Banshee. Charles, Eric, and Moira lead a CIA mission to the Soviet Union to capture Frost, during which they discover that Shaw intends to start World War III, to trigger mutant ascendancy through nuclear destruction. Azazel, Riptide, and Shaw attack Division X, killing everyone but the mutants whom Shaw invites to join him. Angel accepts, but when Havoc and Darwin retaliate, Shaw kills Armando. In Moscow, Shaw compels the generals to have the USSR install missiles in Cuba. Wearing a helmet that blocks telepathy, Shaw follows the Soviet fleet in a submarine to ensure that the missiles break a US blockade. In the meantime, Xavier takes the remaining recruits back to his mansion, where they focus on harnessing their abilities. McCoy believes that Ravens' DNA may provide a remedy for their appearance and manages to get a serum ready, but Raven, after being persuaded by Eric, decides she does not want to hide her identity anymore and refuses to take it. McCoy then uses the serum on himself but it backfires, giving him this blue fur and animalistic, feline-like features. With McCoy piloting, the mutants and Moira take a jet to the blockade line, where Xavier uses his telepathy to influence a Soviet sailor to destroy the ship carrying the missiles, and Eric uses his magnetic power to lift Shaw's submarine from the water during an incredible scene, then flinging it on to a nearby island. Now, as the battle ensues, Eric seizes Shaw's helmet, which allows Xavier to immobilize Shaw telepathically. Now, while Shaw is helpless, Eric reveals he shares Shaw's exclusivist views of mutants, but he still desires to exact his vengeance for what Shaw did to his mother, 
and he pushes the same coin he has been carrying since childhood through Shaz's brain, killing him. Now, unable to risk releasing Shaw, Xavier is forced to telepathically experience Shaz's death. With all said and done, both the US and Soviet fleets fire at the mutants on the island out of fear, but Eric intercepts their barrage of missiles. Now, as he turns their arsenal back towards both fleets, Moira tries to stop Eric by shooting at him, but he deflects the bullets, one of which accidentally hits Xavier in the spine when he intervenes between the two. Eric rushes to help Xavier and, distracted, allows the artillery to fall harmlessly into the ocean. Now, as Charles and Eric speak their piece, Eric parts with Xavier over their differing views on the relationship between mutants and humans. Eric leaves with Angel, Azazel, Riptide, and Raven, who has been swayed to Eric's side because of her constant fear of being persecuted due to her different skin. Later, a wheelchair using Xavier and the mutants return to the mansion, where he intends to open a school for gifted children. Moira promises Xavier never to reveal his location, but Xavier makes sure of this by wiping her memories. Meanwhile, Eric, now naming himself Magneto, and the other Hellfire Club members free Frost from her prison right before the credits roll. Now, both with critics and audience members alike, as well as box office numbers, the film was a fantastic success, as it went on to gross $353 million and receive multiple praises from critics and fans alike. I love this movie. It was an incredible ride, with the focus on the relationship between Charles and Eric to be the winning ticket in my opinion. The choice of casting was excellent, with James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender shining brightly as the younger versions of Xavier and Lencher, and the remainder of the cast bringing their A-game in the presence of amazing talent. Now, the approach to the story of the mutants back in the 60s was wonderful, and the cohesive and confident storytelling was gripping when it needed to be, and thrilling where it should have been. From the directing to the writing as well as the fantastic composition and effects, as well as set designs, First Class was such an excellent ride that jump-started this new set of movies in the X-Men film series. I practically enjoyed every minute of this adventure, and that is why I am giving this an 8.5 out of 10. Now the next film I will cover will be 2013 The Wolverine, and following that will be 2014 X-Men Days of Future Past. So stay tuned, and please do consider hitting the like button and subscribing, I would truly, truly appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for spending your time with me. Until our next adventure, y'all stay classy.